Hello. Is TV talk show host Richard Littlejohn guilty of steamrolling over the road protesters he invited to take part in his show? Is the Pope a Catholic? We're talking about... Oh. We are talking... We are talking about... The we about... You're the one who are talking about the lack of democracy. Will you shut up and let the man speak? We're talking about... The... More from the people who tried to get a word in later. The BBC series States of Mind examined mental illness, including schizophrenia. The first programme, Circles of Madness, argued for better care of the mentally ill, but for many viewers it was negative, unbalanced scaremongering of the worst kind. Unpredictable, aggressive, violent and out of control, that's me. Or at least I was left with that impression after watching the BBC's Circles of Madness, which featured attempts by Marjorie Wallace to show the causes, solutions and issues around schizophrenia. I have a diagnosis of schizophrenia and live in the community. For someone suffering from an illness like schizophrenia, it's like living in a house of paper. Too much is seen, too much is heard. There are too many shadows and too many voices. This film is about the fragility of that world, what causes it and what we can do to help. They are allowing somebody like Andrew Robinson or Christopher Clunis or the other people out into the community and it's almost like they're keeping their fingers crossed. They know that when they stop taking the medication, they're dangerous. But at what point do they gather them back in without infringing on their public... They're actually allowing them out, and it's like playing Russian roulette. They don't know. They can't predict when they're going to attack somebody, but they know the likelihood is there. They should bring them in before that happens. The BBC programme just focused on the, the most extreme and desperate cases, citing the apparently unsubstantiated figure of 100 homicides a year by the mentally ill. In one year alone, over 100 homicides have been committed by people suffering from mental illness. And I know of hundreds of families who live in fear. The programme sought to manipulate us by relating second-hand accounts from terrified neighbours and pleading relatives. This is a neighbour and she's living on the top floor of a tenement, that's right. And uh, somebody with schizophrenia, or psychiatric report it says here, who keeps on saying that he's going to slit her throat. For Marjorie Wallace, there is no debate. Her answer is simple. More beds, more medication, more control. And I think that the, uh, the ideology of community care has already proved to be 10 years out of date. And the very fact that we have potential for radically improved treatments biological treatments in schizophrenia shows that the biological research approach is reaping gains. The community of itself cannot respond rapidly to a serious psychiatric emergency. We need uh, an, an ability and a system whereby consultants looking after patients can admit patients efficiently and quickly at the first sign of any prodrome to, uh, to prevent this situation, this crazy situation where uh, a dangerous event has to happen before the system can um, allow the Mental Health Act to, uh, to swing into action. Marjorie Wallace claims that she wants to help the lives of people like me. This programme did not help. I think you are a good organisation doing a good job. Well, let me put back that to Thank Tony. You. I mean, there Marjorie says the, the majority of people who have contacted her say it was a fair and balanced programme. Is that your experience? No, it isn't. It certainly isn't. I mean, how can potential employers that I go for a job how are they going to give me trust after watching a programme like that? How are they going to trust me? Because all that programme did was say, I'm not to be trusted. I've got no credibility. Well, but, but can I just come, come and answer that one? Is that you've, got, you've got a problem here. There's a whole spectrum of illness that we're talking about, from the mild to the very severe. We made it quite clear that in this programme we were talking about severe illness. I think you're very fortunate, you're very lucky to be able to be here, to be articulate, you're able to live in the community. But lots of the people that we're representing, that I'm talking about, and the people that were in the film, were not able to do I'm that. One of those and people. it's a bit selfish I to say, a... I'm all right, Jack, I need a job, I need a home. But but all the people that I'm talking about are far too ill to get that. They're needing care, they're needing treatment. There's nothing worse. Marjorie, I don't think this was what that was alarm. what I don't think that was what Tony was saying. But can I just move on to the figures that you used? Because um, undoubtedly there were some very worrying figures used about the amount of murders committed. And I'd like to put those figures to Liz Sace, because Marjorie said in one year alone, over a hundred uh, homicides have been committed by people suffering from mental illness. Is that true? 
That figure is a gross exaggeration, and it is actually, just to back up what Tony was saying, it's causing a lot of distress. We've had num a number of calls from people who are saying they're not being trusted by their relatives, they're not being trusted, they're getting more stigma and harassment from neighbours, they're having bricks thrown through their windows because people assume, just because they've had psychiatric treatment, that they're going to be violent. The, the, the figure that Marjorie uses includes people who have had psychiatric treatment after committing a homicide. And what that includes, for instance, is people who have haven't been able to come to terms with what they've done and have needed psychiatric treatment. It includes people who have attempted suicide in prisons and then been transferred out of those prisons. That figure does not refer to people who killed through their mental illness. The, the best figures we have on that from Dr Boyd, who directed uh, an inquiry that reported last year, are 12 cases per year. Uh, that's committed by people who've had recent psychiatric And recent treatment. means within a year. Within a year, that's well, correct. Do you accept that, Marjorie? That, that so, of I mean, the people... I have Dr Boyd's letter here. I've had his letter to you and his letter... I talked... We talked yesterday to him and we had a long conversation with him and he's actually rather cross about the way that the figures are being misinterpreted by mind and by, in fact, the government. He says that there's no doubt that there is about over 100 cases of homicide a year. He accepts that some, a few he may it be... Is incorrect to state that 100 cases but were homicides committed by people who were mentally ill. What that is clearly is here is a very big debate, and yet in your programme, you stated it as an accepted but fact. It's clearly not an accepted fact. May I just fact. say the words I used in the programme? I said it's not one or two cases, but that over a hundred cases of homicide committed by mentally ill people in the course of a year. Increase. Uh, the point that did not come across in the film, that since the 1960s there has been no increase in homicides committed by people diagnosed mentally ill. The, the programme strongly gave the impression that because of community care policy, because of civil liberties, this was a growing problem. You didn't mention the fact that, that there had actually been no increase over 30 years. And I think that what that does is it gives the government a justification for producing no real changes apart from supervised discharge, which is more coercion and control. Measures which are opposed by every major mental health organisation, with the exception of one or two, including SANE. And, and that's the problem, with, with, I think, with giving an hour's programme to one organisation, which at the beginning of a mental health season, when almost all the other mental health organisations, human rights organisations, even the Royal College of Psychiatrists, don't agree that more control is the way forward. Let us in perspective. A lot of people, including you, Liz, think that the BBC was a tremendous thing that the BBC did, these programmes. Yes, I thought the season overall was excellent and there were some very good programmes in it. Our, our only concern was leading with a programme that didn't have balance. As, as the opener, it set the agenda in a sense. Tony, uh, if you were to make a programme on schizophrenia after that season, what would, what would be in it? What would you want to say now? I'd want to discuss the consequences of these type of programmes for people like me. I mean, what do I tell my daughter when her school friends, their parents won't let them come to her birthday party because of me? Because they don't trust me. Sorry, we've been afraid. Thank you very much indeed for taking part. I'm sorry, we have to stop there. After the break, do the M11 protesters and Richard Littlejohn deserve each other?